galloping through the desert of our soul on Pegasus wings love is calling us home galopando el desierto del alma en las alas de Pegaso el amor nos invita a volver time there was an English king and he received the gift of two magnificent Harris hawks. The king was enchanted by his gift and every morning he'd gaze out of the palace window and watch one of the hawks flying high in the sky. After a period of time he noticed that in reality he'd only ever seen one of the hawks and he summoned his trainer to the palace Why is it that I've only seen one of the hawks in the sky? The trainer looked at him and he said, Sire, he said, I've got some sad news for you. He said, as you've seen, one of the hawks, he's magnificent. He flies towards the sun, then he swoops and soars to the ground. He said, but his brother, he refuses to leave the branch. Every time we try to get him from the branch, He gets aggressive, he's full of fear. We've called the vets, there's nothing wrong with him. We called the shamans, the magicians. We got the greatest minds in the palace to come and help us with this hawk. But it doesn't matter what we do, he refuses to leave the branch. The king pondered the dilemma for a moment and he said, you know what? I think we need a more simple solution. I think that we should ask a farmer. Anyway, a few days went past and one day again, the king was gazing out of the window and to his surprise, there was two hawks in the sky and they were magnificent. They were reaching towards the sun and swooping and soaring to the ground. And the king was delighted and he summoned his trainer back to the palace. He said, I'm so happy. He said, finally, the two brothers are soaring together. He said, what did you do? He said, how did you get him to leave the branch? Well, we, we did what you said, sire. We called the farmer. Well, what did the farmer do? Well, in reality, we were so excited with the result, we forgot to ask him. He said, well, please go and get me the farmer. Now the farmer, he was a very humble and simple man. And when he entered the palace, he was extraordinarily shy. He was looking towards the ground and the king looked at him and he said, what did you do? How did you get the hawk to fly? What magic did you perform? Well, in reality, sire, there was no magic. I did something very simple. I cut the branch and when the hawk realized that he had wings, he simply started to fly.
So what is it that stops you letting go of your limitations and realising your full potential? I know what it is. It's the same thing that stopped me. The branch is called fear. I'm like the farmer in the story. I'm going to teach you a simple and yet extraordinarily powerful system that's going to allow you to let go of your limitations and soar aloft like the falcon. This system has seven aspects, which I'll explain in more detail at the end of the movie. But for now, I'm going to teach you four very important facets. These facets vibrate in unified consciousness. Unlike affirmations that create a future moment where you attain something, what these facets do is they allow you to let go of everything illusionary. All your limitations, your fears, your stresses, all the things that stop you from experiencing your true nature. Your true nature is what I call love consciousness. As children, we live perfectly in the moment, wrapped in a warm blanket of unconditional love. We have the freedom to soar aloft like the falcon. But as adults, we have so many limiting ideas, belief systems, fears that we've adopted from society that our mind becomes like a matrix and we become entangled in this web. These belief systems have nothing to do with reality, but they're supported within our bodies. We react, we respond, without really understanding why. The fears are robotic. The reason is we've created an illusion of separation from the greatness of who we truly are. But we are not our thoughts. We are not our fears. We are not our emotions. We are so much more. It's as if we start looking through a dirty window. When we're born, the window's crystal clear. We see things as they are. But as we start to mature and become adults, we have so many fears and limitations that we start to perceive things as we are. We lose sight of the love. We start to respond and react from our fears. We often have limiting beliefs about ourselves, that we're not good enough, that we can't achieve, that we don't deserve, that we're not beautiful or intelligent enough. We have lots of subconscious ideas that come as a consequence of our childhood experience. And these fears start to create our reality. Galloping my horse across the sweeping Uruguayan plains, I was mesmerised by the beauty held within the inner silence of these endless horizons, the simplicity of this country and the lifestyle of its people. It's incredible to see how everything in nature moves so perfectly. All aspects serve each other. A storm, the harsh rays of sun, a cow dies, another is born. All the horses mixing together, different breeds, different colours. I had the privilege of spending time with the gauchos. They are a remarkable people. The ones that I met are very quiet, hardworking and meek of natured, centered completely within self. Working at one with the animals, they seem to have a language of their own. They have big gnarly hands carved from years of hard work and a style of dressing that is typical, but worn with the inner knowledge that they are gauchos and proud of it. We yearn for absolute freedom. We search incessantly for peace, love and fulfilment. Yet we can only find this within ourselves, away from the ranting of the mind and the dream of the matrix, within the stillness 
of love consciousness. I'm going to teach you a simple facet, and this facet vibrates in unified consciousness. Praise love for this moment in its perfection. When you think in its perfection, I want you to place your attention profoundly in the heart. You're going to think the facet with your eyes closed, then very gently let it go. Then think it again and gently let it go. Do not force, do not strain. Praise love for this moment in its perfection. Praise love for this moment in its perfection. I'm going to teach you four facets in total. These facets are going to clean the matrix of your intellect and bring you back to a permanent experience of love consciousness, the unconditional love and peace that is within all humans. You're going to practice these facets for one hour a day with your eyes closed. And everything that vibrates in a lower frequency than love consciousness is naturally just going to fall away. You might ask, how can something so simple work so profoundly? The truth is, life is very simple. The problem is, humans are very complicated. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I felt as a child and I thought as a child. Now that I've become a man, I've put away childish things. As adults, we spend the majority of our time judging and calculating what's wrong with our exterior. We're always comparing, categorizing everything and everyone around us. We try to box ourselves into an ideal way of being. We have learned to blame our human experience as a source of our own discontent. We fundamentally believe there is something wrong with it. We've learned to judge our thoughts, our feelings, our emotions, our peers, our friends, our parents, our children, our political and religious leaders. We judge our financial situation, the state of the environment, certain ethnic groups, our sexual preferences. And let's not forget the judgments we have about ourselves and our bodies. Modern society is an ever-increasing obsession with youth and physical beauty. As we fight against the scale, the wrinkles, the grey hair, we are also fighting against the illusion of time. When we come back to a place of innocence and perfection, we start to love ourselves exactly as we are. When we vibrate in love consciousness, the matrix of the intellect starts to disappear and we start to perceive through a window that is crystal clear. We start to see the beauty and perfection instead of always seeing something to criticize. Another thing we start to experience is living in the present moment. As adults, we're never in the present moment. We're always worrying about the future, regretting the past, dragging a past moment into this moment, projecting our fears onto everything. But when we're anchored in love consciousness, we realize that we have the power to create what we want in our world.
When we come back to our true nature, our true essence, we start to live in harmony. I think back to my past life. Even though I meditated a lot, I was such a stressed out disaster. And I was certainly never in the present moment. When I lived in Melbourne, Australia, I used to walk my dog along the seafront. Eternally busy and overachieving, I hurried by, lost in my worries and distractions. When I began to experience love consciousness, everything started to change. I started to be present in the moment. One day, whilst out with my horses, I heard this repetitive sound. I sat and listened. It was a sound I'd never heard before. The sound of the wind softly whistling through the grass. I started to cry. I was so shocked that I'd been so involved in achieving, succeeding, I'd never truly heard the beauty of what was in front of me. It's so important to think the facets with your eyes open. When you see yourself caught in a drama in your head or in a stressful situation, just think the facet and drop into a place of peace. And you can be all the love that you can and you will see all the love that you can, my beautiful one, my beautiful one. Chase the wind, your time has just begun, my beautiful one. Spread your wings now and fly towards the sun, and you can be all the love that you can, and you This next facet I'm going to teach you will allow you to embrace your human experience in all of its complexity. We all have such a judgment with our human experience, but I always say that in order to be divine, I have to be willing to be human. Does that mean that we don't want things to change? No, of course we want things to change. We all want to experience more love, more love of being, more love on the planet, a world based in peace. But in order to experience that, I have to embrace the now. The new facet is thank love for my human experience in its perfection. And again, when you think in its perfection, you're going to place your attention profoundly in the heart. Thank love for my human experience in its perfection. Thank love for my human experience in its perfection. Thank love for my human experience in its perfection. Have you ever watched children building sandcastles on the beach? They run around filling their buckets and they make their castles higher and higher. When it finally stands in all its glory, they wait with excitement for the tide to come in and pull it all down. Then they happily start building again another castle. Do you think that before they start building, they thought, oh no, we shouldn't build here. The tide's going to come in and destroy it. No, that's not how they think. When the wave comes in, is there anguish? No just the excitement of the next project, a new moment, as they intuitively embrace creation and destruction as a natural part of life. We were all children once. 
we all once embraced the unexpected tide rushing in, open to the unknown and the magic that awaited us around every corner. As adults, on the other hand, most of us seek to preserve the walls of our sandcastles at all costs, in the vain attempt to protect our achievements, possessions from the unpredictability of the world. But it doesn't matter how rigid those walls are, the tide of life will eventually come in and sweep them all away. In this world of duality, we feel different from one another. We perceive separation and injustice everywhere. In a world of extreme contrast and variance, a world of untold possibilities. Within this experience of separation, we search endlessly for union. We strive to heal the planet. We create programs for conflict resolution. We march for peace trying desperately to get humanity to see beyond its differences and live in harmony. But the mind will never feel satisfied. Wherever it goes, it will find disagreement. Even within the groups that appear to be united, there is separations. Religions branch off into countless fractions. Political parties disagree among themselves. Football teams argue about tactics. Even the Beatles split up. Everywhere we look, there is separation, divergence and duality. The only way to experience world peace is to elevate love consciousness. Until we realise that we are all one, we will continue to witness destruction and conflict in a society based in fear. We are what we choose. Let's choose for the love. Once upon a time, there was a young jacare basking on a log in the Iguazu waterfall. He was pondering his responsibility. Being a crocodile, he had a very strong heritage. His ancestors came directly from the dinosaurs. He was a carnivore, a cold-blooded assassin, and all of this weighed so heavily upon the poor crocodile. All of a sudden, a beautiful red butterfly landed upon his nose. In the beginning, he was indignant. He thought, can't she see I'm having serious thoughts? But she seemed to be oblivious to what he was thinking. And every time he'd breathe out, she'd float up into the air. And then gently, she'd come down and caress his nose with her velvety soft wings. Again he'd breathe out and up she'd go. The sunlight would glint on her beautiful red wings and gently she'd come down again. This started to become like a meditation for the young crocodile. Gently she'd go up as he breathed out and gently she'd come back. She was so beautiful and so mesmerising that the young crocodile started to become entranced. And in one moment, the energy completely changed and a smile came across the crocodile's face. For he was no longer a crocodile and she was no longer a butterfly, but they were one in the union of love. On the peaks of the Andes, water turns into snow. It changes form, but it's still the water. Then it changes again and it becomes a glacier, a river of ice. 
Then the lake and the sun seduce the glacier and it starts to melt and unite with the river. It too is incredibly beautiful, the bluest thing you've ever seen. Yet, it is still the water. Water changes form millions of times. In each of its forms, it's splendid, but it never ceases to be water. Lapping on the seashore, it is gentle, refreshing, comforting. In a tsunami, it can become consuming and destructive. As billowing clouds, it casts shadows across the landscape. Then it falls as rain, breathing new life into the earth below. Drunk from a spring, it can be healing and nourishing. Yet, you can also drown in it as it steals your last breath. Love too is like this. As your consciousness expands, you realise that the love is all there is. Everything in the universe is a manifestation of this love. Tears can be running down your face because you think you're suffering. It's still love. Or you can be mesmerised by the eyes of a lover and the tears will still be falling. They are still the water and it's still the love. It never, ever leaves. It's always there. And when you're anchored in love consciousness, love is all you see. And in all forms, you see its perfection. People used to say to me, you need to love yourself more. And I'd say, well, that's a great idea. But nobody knew how. I thought it was having a massage, going on holiday, maybe buying a new sports car. But it never mattered what I did, what I achieved, I always got to the same point in my life where nothing could satisfy me. But in order to realize, first you must let go. So when you see my face in memories and the tears will up inside and my voice will gently come to you like the eyes Ultimately, when I went profoundly into my fears, I realised that I didn't love myself at all. When we create separation from self, we create this belief net. And this belief net makes us think that we don't deserve love. But we still search for it endlessly outside. We search for it in our families, our partners, our successes, our achievements but we never feel complete because ultimately we yearn for the unconditional love that's within us. It's as if we've built our house on a faulty foundation. This next facet I'm going to teach you reunites you with the greatness of who you truly are, the unconditional love that sustains totality. Love creates me in my perfection. Again, when you think the facet, you're going to gently place your attention profoundly in the heart. Love creates me in my perfection. Love creates me in my perfection. The perplexities of love are incomprehensible to the human intellect. Love is the greatest force that exists, the only thing that exists. Yet, we experience it on such a minimal level. As it starts to expand, it encompasses everything, until it completely nullifies the experience of separation and suffering. Love is the mountains. Love is the thunderclouds. Love is the morning rays of sun playing gently on your face. 
Love is the garbage bag that wraps itself around your feet on a windy day. Love is the partner that you gaze at longingly over a candlelit dinner. And love is the street thug that holds a knife to your throat as he removes your wallet from your back pocket. Love is the cancer that sucks away the last breath of your human experience. And love is the painful contractions as you deliver the gift of a newborn baby. Where can I not find love? There is nowhere I cannot find love. It is the only thing that exists. It is the greatness of who you truly are. It is everything. In the breeding season, I find great joy in visiting the whales. They are the biggest animals in the world and surely amongst the most powerful. And all they do is radiate love. It's incredible. It's all you can feel. They are pure peace, yet they are so big. They look at you lazily through the shimmering water as if you're some kind of rare insect. And then down they go again. The whales come with their babies. These babies drink 2,000 litres of milk a day. Now that's a lot of milk. But mum, she just lays there in perfect peace and joy, feeding the baby until she gets tired. And then she simply rolls over on her back. The baby whale hates that and he starts wagging mum with his tail. He could drink 10,000 litres of milk a day. It's a fairly strong thing having a baby hitting you with its tail, especially if it's a baby whale. But mum just lays there, ignoring him, letting him have his little temper tantrum. She doesn't think, oh, I shouldn't get tired so easily. I'm such a bad mother. Now, when she's finished resting, she decides that she's going to teach him how to jump out of the water. Now she starts by leaping out of the water and she's like Fantasia in motion. She's absolutely magnificent. Now when the little baby starts to copy her, he jumps out of the water and he does this great big belly flop. He's an absolute disaster. Mum doesn't think, oh, I'm such a bad teacher. I should have taught him better. What are the other whales going to think? They're going to think that he's not athletic at all. Why isn't his father present? If his father was here, maybe he could do it properly. Do they think that? No. She just simply keeps jumping out of the water and practising until the two together are like poetry in motion. There is so much that we can learn from the animal kingdom. We can learn just to be, to be in the moment, to be the now, to be the love. I'm going to invite you to play a game. Now, you don't have to believe in this game. In fact, you can think it's the silliest thing you've ever heard. All I ask is that you be innocent. I want you to pretend for one moment that you are God. You are the creator of totality. What would your choices be? You create this world and you can change it in any moment. You have all the power. I want you to imagine with an open heart that everything you believe, everything you see, every idea you have is ultimately not based in truth. It is just something that you as God have designed from your imagination. You were never born, you will never die. You never came because you never left. You have always been everything for eternity. There is nothing to fear and there is nothing wrong. You are perfect exactly as you are. And the only thing that exists is love. Imagine that the game you decided to play was to forget that you were God so that you could have an experience based in duality. Within this human experience, you created the most complex web of separation. Every person 
and everything is you, playing a different part. Everyone is creating this grand spectacular for you. It's as if the whole of creation was a huge mirror, reflecting all your loves and all your hates, your joys and your separation. Imagine that the world is not millions of years old, that it is not this massive, unlimited universe, but instead the tiniest speck of information. Information that you had the power to create and you have the power to change. We spend our whole lives looking for one thing, and that thing is love. But what if we were all one, we were all God, and the only thing that was real was the love? What if we'd created an illusion of separation through the matrix of our intellect? How are we going to experience that reality? A life without fear, living permanently in the moment, recapturing the innocence of childhood, trusting ourselves beyond all doubts and perceiving our perfection in everything. There is one answer and there is one answer only. And that answer is enlightenment. We think of enlightenment as something elusive, available for mystics, or special people, like Jesus or Buddha. But what if in reality, it was the greatness of who we all were? What if we could all have that experience? A world based in union, a world without separation, a world without fear. What if we could again all live as one? We're always trying to change our external circumstances. We always think that if something changes, then we can be happy. We lose our capacity to flow in life, and yet we swear that all we want is peace. But we fight for peace. We scream for peace. The only thing we really want is to be right. What I love about my Harris Hawk is that she always has the capacity to flow in life. As the sun's setting, she swoops down in all of her glory and lands on my arm. When she was a baby, she was thrown from the nest and I raised her and taught her to hunt to the point where she thought that I was her mother and she associates me with food. Every afternoon, I take her out. She soars high in the sky, but when I call her, she comes back because she knows I'm going to feed her. She's a very powerful bird. She has the capacity to fight against the wind, but she'd never fight against the wind. She's too astute. She goes with the current, but she never loses sight of her objective. And when the wind changes, she swoops down and she claims her prize. We as adults have so much fear that we lose the trust that allows us the capacity to flow. But as we start to expand an internal experience of love consciousness, we trust that just maybe it could be possible that everything is unfolding perfectly. There once lived a boy whose father was a poor horse trainer. He was given a school assignment to write about what he would like to be when he grew up. The boy put his whole heart into the project and he handed his teacher a seven page essay describing his dream of one day owning his own horse stud. When he received it back, he'd been awarded an F and his teacher had written at the top of the essay in red, see me after class. The boy stayed behind when the bell rang and asked the teacher, why did you give me an F? 
The teacher replied, Your essay described an unrealistic future for a boy like you. You have no money of your own and your family is poor. You don't have the resources to buy your own horse stud. There's no way that you could achieve this. However, if you rewrite the essay with a more realistic objective, I will reconsider your grade. The boy went home and he thought for a long time. He even asked his father what he should do. His father responded, Look, son, you have to decide for yourself. It's an important decision and I can't make it for you. After a week of consideration, the boy handed in the same essay without any changes, telling his professor, You can keep your bad grade. I'm going to keep my dream. Many years passed. One day, the teacher, now on the brink of retirement, took a group of 30 children to visit a famous horse stud. They bred some of the most spectacular horses in the country. He was amazed when, upon meeting the owner, he realised it was the same boy to whom he'd given an F. Upon leaving, the teacher told the owner of the stud, When I was your teacher many years ago, I was a dream stealer. For years I stole the dreams from children. Luckily, you managed to hold on to yours. As you practice the facets I'm sharing with you, the limiting beliefs that have governed your past will fall away without any effort on your part, and you will begin to encounter your dreams. By choosing for the facet, you start to have a permanent experience of love consciousness. The more we choose for this in each moment, the more peace, joy and internal security we experience. When we are anchored in this experience and we choose for that, we can start to let go of all the things in our lives that don't serve. Our addictions, our preoccupations, our self-sabotages, everything that stops the expansion of self-love. Love is like a permanent anchor. If you imagine for a moment that you're a little boat on the ocean and the ocean could be your life, your thoughts, your emotions. Some days the sun's shining and the boat feels stable and calm and tranquil, but then all of a sudden there's a storm and the boat's thrown all over the ocean. It's as if your emotions start to take control of you or your thoughts start taking you into a place of fear. You can start to choose for the facet and find this internal anchor until it becomes your permanent experience. Once you're experiencing perpetual consciousness, it doesn't matter what's happening on the surface of the mind. There could be a storm, it could be calm, the waters can change, but you're always having this underlying experience of peace and joy. And just when you think that life couldn't get any better, that love moves into everything. This next facet is going to create unity with totality. And it's very simple. It's OM unity. When you think OM unity, I want you to place your attention from the base of the spine to the top of your head. So you're simply going to think OM unity and place your attention from the base of the spine to the top of the head and then let the facet go and surrender to the perfection of the union of creation. Om Unity 
city. Arm Unity. What this system promises is the opportunity to experience unconditional love of self, to experience heaven here on earth, to be surrendered in every moment and flowing with the changes of the universe, to live in the here and now, embracing the abundance, the beauty and the magic of life, to perceive the perfection of your creation and enjoy its duality, its inconsistencies, its humanness, every one of its infinite, unique facets. As you change your perception, you will find that this human experience can become the most exciting, wonderful, inspiring, enlightening game that has ever existed. Humanity can be complex, entertaining, beautiful, annoying, unbearable, delightful, fascinating, dull, creative, artistic. I see it all as a massive potpourri, which I throw up in the air and gobble up like popcorn as it falls to the ground. Life is a game full of wonderment and nature is my playground. I revel in the beauty of the planet. I love the magnificence of the Andes, the arid Chilean deserts, the palm encrusted beaches of Brazil, the lush jungles of Colombia, and the rolling green hills of Australia. I love the might and perfection of the animals, from the comical appearance of the platypus and the wombat to the majesty of the perfect chiseled thoroughbred horse. I love the scrawny alley cat that looks like a walking infection, and I love the majesty of the black jaguar that slinks through the rainforests. I'm delighted by the contrasts of the city. I love the noise, the disorder, and the beautiful architecture of the main street, as well as the shanty towns perched on the mountain tops. When we experience unity, the fear falls away and there's nowhere in creation that wonderment cannot be found. But first we must go inwards and find unconditional love of self. And then the outside mirrors that completion. For all of my life, I tried to change the world so that I could be happy. And finally I realised that that peace, that joy was within me. When I learnt to love myself unconditionally, I could love the world unconditionally. I could give joy and peace to my partner, my friends, all of my environment. I want you to imagine for a moment that when you look in the mirror, the person looking back at you is someone that you truly love. And that is my wish for you. Now I'm going to teach you how to incorporate the Isha system into your daily life. The first thing I'm going to ask you is that you make a commitment to yourself to practice this for a minimum of four weeks. And in that period of time, I can promise you, you will see profound changes in your life. You're going to practice the facets for one hour a day with your eyes closed. When you practice the facets, you'll have four facets. So you could do the hour, for example, 20 minutes three times a day or half an hour twice a day. You can do it laying in the bed, at office, sitting in a bus, in the park. You can do it wherever you want. The important thing is that you're comfortable, that you can sit and relax. If you find that when you practice the facets laying down, that you're always falling asleep, I suggest you try sitting up. And if you still fall asleep, what can I say? You need to sleep. This system is very simple and it's very gentle. But as you start to incorporate the facets, you will find that you start to have strange movements in your bodies. You might start to experience emotions. You might have memories. 
You might have toxins leaving. You might have all sorts of different things happening. And this is where I ask you to incorporate being innocent as a child. So how do children behave? If they're happy, they're happy. If they're sad, they cry. If they're angry, they're angry. They don't judge. They're just perfectly in the moment and perfectly human. So allow yourself to be human. Go deep in profoundly into the facets and find what's within yourself and that which you don't wish to keep, just gently let go of. Now I'm going to give you a practical demonstration of how to use the facets. So you close your eyes and you think, praise love for this moment in its perfection. Then you place your attention in your heart. You wait a few moments and you think the facet again. Praise love for this moment in its perfection. You might have a lot of thoughts. As the body's healing and becomes active, it starts to make the mind move out on thought. That's perfect. You might have memories from your childhood. You might feel sad or you might feel angry. If you're sad, just cry. And if you're angry, try screaming in a pillow. And then again, think the facet. Praise love for this moment in its perfection. After five minutes of using the facet, you're going to move to the second facet. Thank love for my human experience in its perfection. Again, you're going to place your attention profoundly in the heart. Thank love for my human experience in its perfection. You might feel something strange in your body. You might have energy. You might have a strange taste in your mouth. It doesn't matter. Just simply keep incorporating the facet. Sometimes when you use the facet, it might feel so profound, so deep, that you can hardly even remember to do the facet. That's perfect. Sometimes it might seem like you're just repeating the facet one on top of the other. When you see that, just gently come back to leaving a space. You can't do this wrong. Then you move to the next facet. Love creates me in my perfection. Again, you might feel an emotion you might feel that the facet has nothing to do with the truth. That doesn't matter. You don't have to believe the facet. You're just going to repeat it mechanically. Love creates me in my perfection, attention in the heart. Whatever happens naturally is absolutely perfect. Then after five minutes, again, you will move to the next facet, om unity. When I think om unity, I take the attention from the base of the spine to the top of my head. Again, I leave a space and again, I think om unity. Whatever happens naturally is perfect. If there's noise, that's perfect. It's just another thought. Try and be as innocent as possible. Another way of expanding love consciousness very rapidly is to think the facet as much as possible with your eyes open. You can be in a traffic jam, in a bank queue, just jogging, walking down the street, whatever you're doing, start to make incorporating the facet a normal part of your day. If you imagine you have thousands of thoughts every day and lots of these thoughts are based in drama, fears, worrying about the future, regretting the past. So you start to automatically incorporate the facet into each moment and you're starting to focus in the present. When you're in the present, you can anchor and center yourself 
in love consciousness. In each moment, you can make a choice. Do I choose for the fear or do I choose for the love? Habitually, we are choosing for the fear, so we can make a choice now that we have a tool to choose for the love in each moment. And when you keep choosing for the love, you become more and more love. So I've taught you how to use the facets with your eyes closed and how to use the facets with your eyes open to incorporate them all the time. Another thing that's very important is that as the stress is leaving, you feel your emotions, you drink water, and you get a bit of exercise. Because you're starting to vibrate in high frequencies, everything that doesn't serve starts to fall away naturally. As I focus on praise, love and gratitude and perfection, everything that vibrates in fear starts to fall out of my universe. But I support this by doing exercise, drinking water and feeling my emotions. As we start to expand love consciousness, we start to perceive the places in our lives where we're not being real. These places may be where you're constantly not speaking the truth, where you're abandoning yourself, where you're putting on social masks and not being true to your own heart. As you see these things, you can gradually start to change. The wonderful thing about love consciousness is when you start to experience this internal peace and joy, you have an internal security that allows you to walk through your fears. Another thing you might start to see is your addictions and how these addictions are constantly leading you towards suffering. When I started to expand love consciousness, I started to be so aware of so many aspects of myself that were immature, that no longer served. My addictions, my body started to reject. My habits that led me to suffering, I became so conscious of, I started to choose for something much more important. And that was to nurture the unconditional love that was in me. And the more I started to love myself, in each moment, I started to perceive more perfection externally. All my internal criticisms stopped being projected outside. And all of my environment started to change. I started to create what I wanted in my life. I started to be more innocent, more joyful, not always worrying about the future. I had the capacity to flow, to surrender in each moment and open myself up to receive a completely new world simply by becoming my true essence. All humans are of the same essence, be that love, God, divinity. But what we have that's individual is our facets. We have millions of different facets. And when we start to polish our internal diamond through the expansion of consciousness, we start to find how incredibly beautiful and unique we truly are. So much love for you 
Everything 